Hello, everybody. Today it is Friday, the 14th of July, 2023. My name is Kerry Holzman. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's a Friday live show, and today we're going to be doing a live unboxing review of a, PC, a mini PC manufacturer who I've never heard of before, and I want to evaluate the what they're offering for the price and the quality and the upgradability, et cetera, et cetera, the, see how they make themselves different from the competition or if they make themselves different from the competition. Hmm. Well, we're going to find that out today with the Blackview MP200, an 11th Gen Core i5 that uh, looks to be a very familiar configuration. If I pull up the Amazon page for this, I want to show you what this is all about. Let's see, screen capture. That off. Okay, so this is the Blackview MP200 mini gaming PC, the i5-11400H. It's up to 4.5 gigahertz. It has 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig solid state drive. CPU has six cores with 12 threads and supports 4K resolution at 60 hertz with HDMI, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, gigabit ethernet and supports up to three screens at that 4k and has three four usb 3.0 uh, ports now you see the price here is 699.99 well this is a 350 dollars computer so they literally doubled the price on amazon and i'm not sure why but if you look at aliexpress you'll see it's 369.99 it's the same unit Blackview Mini PC MP200, and with a $20 off store coupon that brings that price to $349.99, which seems about right for what you're getting. Now, this processor is about, what, two years old now, so this isn't the latest and greatest, and they really were promoting it for office work, which is what I saw. Now, over here, they're promoting it for gaming, and I don't know that I would promote this for gaming, but we'll, we'll see more into it here in a moment. Let's see what they've got to say about it on the outlist. Now, basically, what I did is I just copied all of this and pasted it into my video notes, and I've left the bad grammar and poor English alone. It's not my writing. I just copied and pasted it. But if we look at it together, it says it's... Uh, Core i5 11400H. It says 11400. I thought it said 11450. Am I dreaming? No, no. It's, yeah, it's 4.5 gig. It is an 11400. All right, that matches. Um, six cores, 12 threads, 12 meg cache. Turbo is up to 4.5. Runs faster and more stable than, well, all right, than anything less than it, of course. Okay, 16 gigs dual channel and 512 gig storage upgrading. Upgrade friendly, supports dual channel, so dim slots, allowing memory expansion up to 128 gigs, 64 plus 64. Okay, there is no such thing as far as I know, and please, if you have a link to a 64 gig SO dim DDR4 module, I'd like to see one, because to the best of my knowledge, they only make them up to 32, so I think this is wrong, but um, maybe I'm wrong. Additionally, it includes a 512 gig M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 SSD with a two and a half inch SATA. You can add optionally, you can increase your storage capacity with a maximum extension of two terabytes. Uh, we've tested these and this two terabyte limit does not seem to be enforced anymore. So I would assume that you could put any size drive you want in there. So we tested. I don't know for sure, but I'm fairly confident <laughs> that there is no such limit. Um, there used to be, but I don't think they've updated. Small but powerful micro PC. It's uh, 7.2 inches by 5.9 inches by 2.97 inches. It has a cooling module made from a blend of high-tech copper alloy for efficient heat dissipation. Built-in silent control chip heat dissipation without noise. Multiple I.O., so one 4K HDMI port, one USB Type-C port, one DisplayPort port, 
one gigabit ethernet port, four USB 3.2 ports. Didn't it say USB 3.0 up here? Say up here, USB 3.0. And then down here, it says USB 3.2. Hmm, okay. 3.5 millimeter audio input and output jack easily meets office needs, home audio video, and mini gaming PC needs. Bluetooth 5.2, triple screen display support at 4K at 60 hertz. We're using Intel's graphics, which let's face it, Intel's built-in graphics are great for everything but gaming, or if you're doing some very mild gaming, like maybe, uh, I don't know, Valorant, uh, League of Legends, something like that. But I think it's gotta be a pretty lightweight game. I would not call this a gaming PC. They say it's got a three-year warranty and tech support, and it's certified. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they honor that warranty if they're not in the U.S., but uh, hopefully you never just need to use it, and we don't need to find out. Just taking a look here at some of the screens, the exploded view here. Uh, it says the RAM is 3,200 megahertz. Well, we'll verify all this when we open it up. And they talk a little bit about how they're handling heat and that it's easy to upgrade. And then there's a listing of all of our ports right here, USB 3.2, Gen 2 by 4. Okay, well, if that's the case, maybe my little SanDisk Extreme SSD that's supposed to be able to do 2,000 megabytes per second will actually achieve it on this. We're going to find out. So on the left side there, that's the back. And on the right, where it says power button, that's the front. And 15 watt type C support. Where's the power go? Well, you know what? There's only so much you can learn from the specifications. That might be obvious once we actually open it. And again, looking at AliExpress, I'm sure the same person wrote this, wrote the other one. And more information here. Reiterates 3200 megahertz, reiterates up to 128 gig expansion. That's got me really puzzled, 128 gig. I, I think somebody's made a mistake here. Maybe they're thinking of, uh, I don't know what they're thinking of. I don't know that a 64 gig memory module exists in standard desktop DDR4, does it? I think it does. Okay, so I'm a little confused. I'm a little perplexed. And, you know, I, g I give them a little bit of wiggle room with regards to English not being their first language, right? So there's going to be some grammatical errors or things maybe lacking a... a, a an experienced translation. So that's what I'm here to do. I want to translate all this and see what it really is and put it in a way that uh, hopefully we all understand and uh, can properly set expectations so you know whether or not you're interested or, you know, whether or not it's something you, you find appealing based on an in deep, a deep dive review that we're doing right now. Lawn Dog said, Carrie, that's pretty impressive specs on the USB ports. It's not typical. I can't wait to see what we get in some brief testing. The machine is very up-to-date in features. Yeah, even though the CPU isn't. <laughs> Oystein says, you can even get the EU plug, LOL. All right, well, look at how nice it's packaged. Isn't that neat? I like that. It's got a little pull tab here. Okay, here's the Blackview mini PC. Yeah, this has never been off. So, thank you, chair that. And let me bring it up to the camera. We'll take a close up look at it together. 
Okay, so here's the front. And there's our power button. Here's our audio jack for headphones or microphone or both headset. Two USB 3.2s and a USB type C. Ooh, it's got a kind of a rubbery feel. I like that. I don't know what that material is, but it's it's not the hard plastic. It's got some kind of a coating. All right, on the back. Well, there's our power connector right there. There's our Ethernet, our HDMI, our Display Port, and two more USB 3.2s, and we can see the uh, CPU heatsink through the fins. There's two screws on the bottom, which I'm guessing you're going to take these two screws out, and this whole panel should then slide down. Yeah, it can't slide up based on the way that that has a lip on it. It would have to go out towards you. So it looks easy to get into. Let's see what else we have in the box. On the top of the unit, we have our Intel Core i5 Go Faster sticker. In the box, we've got an HDMI cable that many PCs ship with for some reason. We have a power plug that, that will not work for me, but it looks like a standard Mickey Mouse power plug typically used on uh, laptops and other mini PCs. See how it kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. But we don't use this kind of plug, so that does me no good. I asked them about that, and they said they didn't have any U.S. plugs available and asked me if that would be a problem. And I said, no, I just wanted to make sure you were aware of what you sent me. We've got some screws. We've got... I don't know what these are for. Oh. We have a stand. Is it cold? Oh, it's metal. Okay. Um, usually when we've seen these stands from other manufacturers, they're plastic and they can be a little fidgety to, to put them in. You know, they kind of have to work with them. And then sometimes when you're adjusting them, the... A little rubber grommet piece comes off, but that looks pretty solid. All right, we'll leave that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't know what these things are. I'll show them to you up close at the camera. Um, it's kind of got like little wheels. Don't know what this is. Anybody want to guess? What else do we have in here? Got a box right here. Martin Erdson says that power plug is a French-German power plug from Europe. Steven says it's a European plug. Yeah. Appreciate that. I've never been to Europe, so I wouldn't know. Okay, so we've got our power brick, pretty big, heavy power brick. We've got an owner's manual here, really small. It's a mini owner's manual for a mini PC. And that's all there is in this box. So I think that's all of it. So let's hook it up, turn it on for the first time, and see what it looks like. First thing I'll do is plug in power. This power cable, which I just was using last night on those Lenovo's and other mini PCs, so that was convenient. And then I've got my keyboard and my mouse right here. Just let me move these off to the side. And plug the dongle in. Yeah, let's plug it in up front. Yeah, so this still has the same problem they all have. They kind of sit in there a little wonky. Uh, you know, give them kudos. They made it out of metal. And what else do I... Oh, I need uh, an HDMI cable. We're not going to plug it into the internet until after we get through the Windows 11 setup routine first so it doesn't force us to create a 
Microsoft account, which I don't use. Okay, and let me put myself in a corner here. Then I'll turn it on. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. Power is on. Elijah 52 Diggins says, Carrie, check your PayPal. Joshua Grennan, Gwenin, Gwenin, those strips might be for the stand. Uh, don't know where they would go. I guess it's as good as mine. All right, check in the PayPal. Elijah Dickens sends $40 via PayPal. Thank you, Elijah. Susan Lawrence with $20. And Mr. Peter Laycock sends some money. He says, anything you want. I hope Marlena gets well soon. Your friend Buster. Buster, thank you so much as well. A thank you once again to Elijah Dickens, Sue Lawrence, and our good friend Peter Laycock, who we all know here as Buster for your generosity and your support of what we're doing here on the channel. So I'm not here being the mouthpiece for some corporation paying me to say what they want me to say. I like to say what I want to say. It doesn't pay as well. All right, let me take a look at, uh, let's see, I got to go full screen so I can see the screen. Ooh, the fan noise on this is quite noticeable. Let's see if it quiets down after we get the I mean, it's not really doing much, so I don't know why it's so loud. United States, yes. US, yes. Second keyboard, no. I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. Accept the license agreement. Enter username. User. Enter. Password will leave blank. That we just go right to the desktop. And I turn off all this stuff, but I do leave location settings on. Why is that? Oh, they'll tell you in the chat room. Sarge Tech says, and what you want to say, Carrie, is what we want to hear. <laughs> well, thank you, Sarge Tech. I do wonder sometimes. Paul says they are for the install of a two and a half inch solid state drive. Oh, well, I'm just kind of curious how that works because I've never seen a, a drive bracket that in any way resembles that. Yeah, not only does the time zone auto, uh, by leaving location settings on, not only does it set the date and time and keep it up to date, because your computer will lose seconds that eventually become minutes over time. It also can adjust the clock automatically for you during daylight savings time. And uh, whenever I want to search for something, like I, I want to go to a restaurant or a particular store, I can say, where is a McDonald's near me without having to tell it where I am? And it generally gets it in the right vicinity anyway. It's just like you do with your cell phone. All right, now we're at the desktop, so I can plug it into the internet now. Now we're free and clear to plug it in from this point forever forward with internet access. And we'll take a look at some of our specifications and see if it matches what they say. So first and foremost, I want to see that little globe become little monitor. There it goes. So now we have internet access and uh, we're going to go over to Windows Update. See what we're missing for updates. It's already synchronized the time. That's good. And let's right click on 
start button and go to device manager. Okay, we don't have any hidden items or, or items that don't have drivers. You'd be surprised sometimes. And then let's go one more time, right click on the start menu, go to system, we'll get some system information. It's an 11th gen Intel Core i5 11400H, just as advertised. 16 gigs of RAM, just as advertised. Windows 11 Pro 22H2. I'm glad to see it's the current version of Windows 11 Pro. It's not 21H2. That's good. Thumbs up for me on that. With regards to the network adapter, let's go back to device manager. I should have checked this when I was in there. Is that a one gig or a 2.5 gig network adapter? And who makes it? It's a one gig Intel i219 and it's an intel ax201 wi-fi adapter and intel bluetooth so it's all intel that's nice they didn't go on the cheap side with the, the less expensive real tech stuff not that it's bad there's our trusted platform module 2.0 the reason why this is preferred when it says intel is we can use the intel driver assistant it's free from intel to get updates on drivers for any Intel hardware in our computers, even if those are AMD based computers. So when you have a mixture of different hardware, you're getting your drivers from different places. If most of our equipment can be all from one company, then it makes it a lot easier to just go to one place to get those drivers. So things like um, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your LAN, that's, you know, if you can get that Intel on an Intel system, which has Intel drivers for video display that get updated regularly. It's just one-stop shopping, you know what I'm saying? And then you don't have to get your drivers from some questionable source. You know it's coming from the manufacturer directly, and that's completely free for you to use. All right, this says it's downloading. This says restart now. All right, let's go ahead and restart it. I don't normally like to restart the computer during an update, but I've seen a couple of updates that just sit there waiting until you restart before they'll continue. So I'm a little inconsistent with whether or not I wait or whether or not I restart. And part of that has to do with my mood, whether or not I'm feeling impatient. And part of that has to do with something happening recently where I was waiting and waiting for, it to, for the update to finish before I restarted. And after like 15 minutes of no movement, I'm like, well, clearly this just ain't happening. So I restart it and then it continued the rest of the updates as normal. I wish it would have made it clear. These other updates can't progress until you restart first. A lot of times if a particular update wants to restart, it doesn't necessarily negate other updates installing. Sometimes it does. All right, I don't like this little icon down here. So I just right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings. Oh wait, this is Windows 11. So to do it in Windows 11, I just type in the word search permission right there. All I had to do was type in search PE, scroll down to more settings and turn off the content suggestions. And that gets rid of that forever. Or at least until there's another big, big update that might put it back. And then back over to Windows Update one more time. Windows Updates. Install. Oh, it's already doing that in the background anyway. Okay, so while that's working, let's take another look at, uh, let's hit Control-Alt-Delete, go to the Task Manager, go to the Memory, Performance Memory, and what speed does it say our memory is running at? 3200. All right. I've seen so many PC manufacturers say 3200, and and they actually do have 3200 RAM installed, but it doesn't run at 3200. It runs at like 2666 or something. But in this case, we're, we're getting exactly what they described. So, so far, so good. Now, I'm sensing a little bit of deja vu with this particular model because if we open up the browser here, close that, close that. Go over to Minis Forum.
Mini PC. Oh, which one is it? It's just others. Yeah, this one that says 11400H. Let me get rid of the camera because I think I'm covering up some information on the screen. So the Elite Mini TH60 has the same processor. You can order it bare bones and put in your own RAM, your own storage, or we can match what they have here. And they're significantly cheaper. And I can get a US power plug, although they were just out of them. It's not that they don't provide it. And we have a completely different form factor. So does one have more ports than the other one? This looks nearly identical. Hmm. Where were the specs at? Oh, here they are. I forgot. Mini Swarm puts it in a tab on the website. Um. It appears there's two M.2 slots for storage and one M.2 for Wi-Fi. I'm just kind of curious how this compares. Are these USB 3.2 Gen 2x4? Oh, they mean that there's four. It's not Gen... Okay. <laughs> I think I, I misunderstood what they wrote. Um, anyway... Seems very familiar. They do have an i7 version of this available. Obviously, that'll cost more. That's the TH80. TH60 is the model this compares with. All right, so let me get back over to camera one. Enough of this. Uh, or you know what? First, let me just close, close all this down. And yeah, we're doing good here. So while well, that's downloading, I'm going to grab my flash drive and copy my utilities over so we can get some tests. Just overall, you know, get a better idea of exactly what's in here before we open it and look. So I'll go to my yellow folder over to my USB drive. And I want, let's see, I'll put VLC on here. And let's see, Google carries Windows 10 optimizer, which works fine on Windows 11. I'm not sure how much it helps, but it doesn't hurt anything. It does, it does do some useful things like turning off indexing. And PC testing software, I want CPU Z. And I want HW. I, hardware information, and Prime 95, Crystal Disk Info, whoops, Crystal Disk Info, Crystal Disk Mark. All right, I think I've got everything. I eject, <clears throat> we'll eject the SanDisk flash drive. All right. Harry, when I click on your link below the stream, it shows the price at three forty nine. Um, you're talking about the Amazon link? Maybe they've uh, 
Let me go back over to the page. Let me, let me refresh the page. You know what it could be? If, if I show you the page again, let's go back over there. The reason it shows 699 here is explained right here. You can go ahead and read that. I'm uh, sorry, not that line, this line. Can you read that for me? What does that say? So if you're not an Amazon Prime member, the price is $6.99. If you are an Amazon Prime member, it's $3.49. That's much better. Uh, obviously, I'm not signed into Amazon on this computer because I don't need all my private information broadcast around the world. So I may show different prices that if you're a Prime member, you would see. But if you're not a Prime member, then this is what you should expect. But thank you for pointing that out. You got a sharp eye, Ron. I appreciate that. That does help explain it because I was, I was confused. I, actually, I'm still a little confused. It looks like we've got 10 ratings averaging four and a half stars. That's not terrible. That's far from terrible. It's actually really good. Really speedy PC, impressive little box, right price for a good daemon. Very good. I don't use it for games, so I can't comment, but it does everything I need it to. That seems fair. This one is a, oh, these are all verified purchased. You see it says verified purchase. That's how you know that it's not just somebody leaving comments or reviews, but somebody who made the purchase from Amazon. So you know the review came from somebody who purchased the product from Amazon. Perfect little device to host all your music along with an embedded Cobuzz and Tidal high-res streaming. All you need to do is remove Windows 11 and install Linux. <laughs> yeah, okay, one of those people, fine. Um, yeah, so far so good. I think we're off to a good start here. I think the Minis Forum PC is still a bit cheaper. However, um, we're going to have to test the speed of these USB ports and see what that brings with it. And I never did review the TH, was it TH60 and TH80? Was it TH40? Whatever they were just a minute ago. I haven't, I haven't reviewed those quite yet. Um, let me go back over here for a second. I think I made my video a little bit too big, or let's just move it over, I guess. We'll do both. Make it smaller and move it over so we can keep it high. Then maybe also move this over a little bit this way. There we go. Okay, so that's very interesting. I'm going to go in the other room and grab my SanDisk Extreme drive. So it's... So they, the times four meant there was four ports, not that it's running times four. All right. USB standards are just so confusing. I mean, I'm a tech and I get them all confused. I can't imagine what the, the average computer user uh, thinks about translating USB four specs. Yeah, they really, they really screwed it up with USB three, as far as I'm concerned. That's where it all went the wrong direction. So hopefully moving forward with USB 4, things will be clearer. I did say hope. I didn't say it was going to happen. I hope it's going to happen. Waiting for a restart. I'll restart it. And... I'll cut up over there, just biding my time waiting for these updates. But I think when we come back up to the desktop with the bulk of these updates, I think that's good enough for me to move forward. And uh, we'll run the, uh, the testing, the, the, run the results of the testing software I've copied over and see how she performs.
Ron says that camera looks heavy. I don't know. Usually it's the lens that's heavy, not the camera. Old Man 55 says, Carrie is a businessman, a teacher, a stock boy, and a tech detective, and a janitor. You're not, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. You could probably add a few more things onto that list, but that's all right. Um, I, I'm not bored, if that's what you're saying. Sarge Tech says he's sticking with his Pentax DSLR. He's got lots of glass to go with it. Yeah, if you've got a... If you've got an investment of lenses to a particular manufacturer's camera, then you sort of makes sense financially to stay with that manufacturer as their future cameras typically accept their older lenses. So if I go Canon, I got to get Canon lenses. And if I get a Sony, I can't use any of those Canon lenses on the Sony. And even if I could, they wouldn't look as sharp. Canon, both Canon and Sony, when you're, make, when you're using their brand of lens on their brand of camera, uh, it just works better. You just get overall better picture quality. Gee, imagine that. I wonder how that happens. Greg M said this PC is too expensive at $1,000 Canadian from the same seller, even at $649. It should be about $800 Canadian here without prime discount. Well, you can just order it from AliExpress. It just means you'll have to wait a couple weeks to get it, that's all. I will say, maybe I've been spoiled lately with the mini PCs being quiet. This idle speed is quite noticeable. It's... it's it's a drone. It's, it's droning on. It's not loud. It's not difficult for me to talk over it, but I definitely know it's turned on. So it just now quieted down a little bit. So with my AC running, you know, I've got my noise suppression on the microphone turned on. One of the great things when we come out of summertime and we're back into the cooler weather is that AC doesn't run. And then the studio is nice and quiet and I can turn the noise suppression off and you can hear all the nuances of the equipment I'm working. With. But during the summer months, just be aware because of the, the noise of the AC that uh, it interferes with the quality of the audio. So I really put the noise suppression on for your benefit. All right, let me go over here to HDMI input. There we go, I can see it full screen now. Let's take a look at Crystal Disk Info and see what it says about our installed solid state drive. What do we have? What do we have in there? 4C XP, I don't know what that is, but it is PCIe Gen 3 by 4. So it's Gen 3, well, I guess, well, generation 11 it could have been Gen 4. Hmm. Website say it was Gen 4. Too much information. I can't keep it all in my head. Let's see how it performs. Obviously, it won't go faster than 3600 if it's Gen 3. But let's see how close we get to that. Start that test now. Greg says he's received things from AliExpress in a week, so there is that option. I think you pay more for that. I, I'm not sure how you can get it through customs that quick, but sometimes customs get stuff through faster than other times. And I don't think you could speed up customs, but I've never received anything from AliExpress that fast. Paul M says, I think only Gen 13 is PCI 4. Gen 13 should be PCI 5. 5. Gen 4 should have been on the 10th gen, but Intel withheld it. So that's why you'll see some motherboards that are for 10th and 11th gen CPUs. 
where one slot will not work, one of the M.2 slots will not work at all with a 10th gen CPU on the motherboard, but with an 11th gen CPU, not only does it work, it works at gen four. And you get up to the 13th gen, now you're into gen five. Not all 13th gen motherboards support gen five, however. So many of them are still gen four because it costs more money to, anyway, it's a little, what are you gonna do? Paul Kitching said, didn't cameras and other electronics have AI years ago? Wasn't it called fuzzy logic? Um, so the autofocusing used a technique that you're describing, but now uses artificial intelligence where it can now identify shapes such as a person, a bird, an animal. If it's something that has eyes, the AI can determine what an eyeball is in the picture and will there'll be like a little box that when you're taking a picture, there's a little focus box. As you hold the camera, the focus box is like white and then it'll move around. And when it sees what it believes to be your target, that's the AI. It, it kind of has an idea of what it is you want to shoot. It then turns the box green so you can take your picture. And if somebody's walking past and ends up in the picture, it, it automatically knows that and takes a second picture like instantly. And it, it does all these crazy things with artificial intelligence using a logic that's not fuzzy, but an actual real logic to determine what it is you're taking a picture of and how to best capture that specific item within the frame, not just everything in the frame. At least that's my understanding of it. You can read more about it, just uh, read any of the reviews or visit uh, any of the YouTube reviews that are out on it. Like I say, it's not listed at Amazon yet, but I expect sometime in August it will appear on Amazon. And I'm sure it'll be at MSRP for quite some time. Sony and Apple, <laughs> those two companies, well, they, they aren't quick to lower their prices. Morton saying good night. He's going to catch the rest of the stream later. All right, Morton, you take it easy. It seems like you're taking an early night there, aren't you? Uh, here in the States, it can't be more than five o'clock. But hey, you need some rest, get some rest. Thank you for hanging out with us. Paul M says, maybe because it's using a laptop CPU that Gen 11 doesn't support Gen 4. Um, I thought my Dell XPS 11th Gen laptop supported Gen 4. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, so our read numbers, sequential, are 3418. That's really, really good. Our write numbers are at 2618. It's weird that they both end in 18, isn't it? That's usually the right, right speed on a, on a, aside from going to the high end, NVMe or the low end, we're kind of right in the middle. And by in the middle, we're getting close to being in that high performance tier for Gen 3. But with the write speeds being one third less than the read speeds, uh, that's pretty common at a certain price point. If you want the write speeds and read speeds to be closer to the 3600 mark, you got to spend more money and likely get a larger capacity for that to happen. However, nothing wrong with this drive. I would be very happy with its performance numbers based on what I'm seeing here. Like I said, your limitation is going to be 3600 on this interface and so nothing you can do about it. If that's not good enough, there's, there's no upgrading that. So you have to get a different platform. Now, let's see what we're doing for Prime 95. Let's go to hardware info and let's see what kind of temps we're looking at out this thing. Because that fan sure is running a lot. It has quieted down right now, which now I can, can barely tell it's on. I can faintly hear it right now, which is good. I like that. And let's see here. 
temperatures. Okay, and let's bring up Prime 95. And we'll slam 100% of workload onto all the cores and much of the RAM. And let's see what our temps do. Started this, it's got a timer that was a bit around 35 seconds when we started Prime 95. So once we exceed 20 minutes, or if we exceed um, 95 degrees Celsius, I might end the test early. So what we're looking at primarily is this main core temperature, and this is where it's at currently. This is, is the, the, the lowest number it's been since we started the HW Info software. This is the highest temperature it's gotten to since we started. So it's already climbed up very, very quickly into the mid-70s, which is a little concerning, but this is a very unrealistic torture test. Normally, people don't make a computer work this hard for this long unless you've, you're doing something very specific that most people don't do, like render videos. And at that, I mean render big videos that are like an hour long at 4K or 8K. That's really going to cause any computer to utilize every bit of performance it's got, even if you've got the most expensive computer with the best processor, the most RAM, and the most storage, the fastest storage, it's still going to be a workload. <clears throat> so, oh, this is our max, wait a minute, Am I, I'm confused. This is our current temp, this is our minimum temp, this is our maximum temp, and this is our average. So I don't care about the average, I'm interested in this number right here. So we've already hit 82 degrees, and the test has been only been run about 90 seconds, right? Because that started when we started the software. This clock started the minute I started the software. It was about 30, 35 seconds in before we started Prime 95. Bear that in mind as we watch these temperatures climb. We've got to subtract about 30 seconds off that clock to get an idea of how long it took to reach those high temps. And it didn't take long. Is the fan getting louder with the load? The fan is getting to the same level of volume it was at when I was commenting on it. It's, that must be full speed that I'm hearing. And why it would be running at full speed early on when I was just booting into Windows and, you know, that didn't make any sense to me. But maybe it's running some background tasks or something that's causing it to heat up. And so that fan cranks up until the heat level goes down and then the fan can slow down and get quieter. Nick Caffrey says, you know, Kerry, I have a Canon DSLR and a kit lens and a Galaxy A53, and I think you're right on track. And now that I think, I think I'd be probably better served upgrading to a Galaxy S23. Well, you know, there's some rumor that the Galaxy S24 is going to use a layered lithium-ion battery, like what the cars use. It's what they call a jelly roll, and it's supposedly better for charging, faster charging, and you get way more battery life out of it. It'll be interesting to see what the A24 turns out to be like, but I'm very, very happy with my, with my S23. The S24, yeah, I'm, I mean, that's all I've heard so far, but uh, I'm a big fan of the Galaxy line, Samsung's Galaxy line of uh, cell phones, and I got their Galaxy uh, Book 3, which is a really high-end content creator laptop, and I really should start using it. <laughs> Starshine said, I hear the latest Sony Xperia has create is a crazy good camera. Usually people have nothing but good things to say about all Sony cameras. David Dix at Rock City PC said, Yeah, I just checked my Dell XPS. It's an 11th gen, and it does support Gen 4 M.2. In fact, he's got it's got dual Gen 4 M.2 slots. Thanks for double checking that for me, David. That's 
universally across the board if the the 10th gen Intel chip just did not support Gen 4. When AMD came out with their line, they were supporting it a good six to eight months before Intel. It was very disappointing for me when the 10th gen came out that it didn't support Gen 4. But it absolutely does is supported on Gen 11 across the board. The fact that we have Gen 3 in here suggests to me that either we have a Gen 4 slot, but we've got a Gen 3 SSD plugged into it, and that'll be something for us to look into. We can verify that when we're done with this test, which has been running now, oh, about five minutes. And uh, 87 degrees Celsius is the hottest it's been so far. Nick Poverman said his Dell 5520 is an 11th gen Intel chip, i5 1135G7, and it supports 4th gen NVMe. Okay, thank you for confirming that. James Prezi says he's got the 23 Ultra from Galaxy. I don't like the big phones and I don't like the stylus, but uh, do you like it? Usually when Samsung releases new phones, they if you go back year after year, it's usually in February when they do that. Well, we're, this is running. I'm going to grab a cold Gatorade. And if you guys have any questions for me, this is a great time as we're waiting for these tests that you know, we can chit chat instead of asking me something while I'm in the middle of doing something completely unrelated. <laughs> this is the time when you have my attention. Just saying. Sometimes people pick the worst time. Starshine wants to know the layered battery is that similar to parallel charging? You should uh, Google it. Uh, Google Samsung Galaxy A, um, S24 and hit the news tab. And you'll see their articles on the, on the battery, which are rumors at this point, but from very reputable sources. Douglas Burchell says, Carrie, I still have my Samsung Note 10 Plus. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Oh, James Prezi says he just got the S23 Ultra two days ago, so he hasn't set it up yet. Old Man 55 says we're at 89 degrees Celsius now on the temps. Whew, getting warm. The camera on the S23 Ultra is excellent. Four of my family members have that phone, says Tim Teal. I've got the just the regular S23, and I think the camera is excellent. I mean, as happy as I was with the S22 and the S21 and the S10, they just keep getting better and better. It's my understanding that the S23 Ultra has the best camera, but I don't really think I need that. But when the best camera becomes standard, I'll just comment about how much I like it. And Lawn Dog has posted a link about the Samsung S24 battery technology. Thank you, Lawn Dog. see how are we about eight minutes eight and a half minutes into the test not even halfway through and we're already getting super super high temps all right so we've we've crossed over that 20 minute boundary so i think we can end this test i think it's safe to say we're never going to get higher than 91 on this it throttles before it goes any hotter so it's not like the thing's going to blue screen on you and crash but if you're working this that hard for this long you can expect it to uh get a little slow. When it throttles, it slows down to get itself cooled off. But that prevents it from crashing. So between slow or crash, I'll take slow. And now that we've stopped the test, we should see these temps drop rather rapidly here. Now, with regards to Crystal Disk Mark and my SanDisk drive, I am curious if uh, I'll try the USB Type-C port first, because that's usually the fast port on most computers. And on many computers, it's going to be the same speed as the Type A USB 3 ports, just that the, the connector's different. So I don't know which is the case in this particular model. So let's take a look once again at Crystal Disk Mark. 
this folder's over. Oops. All the way over here. Let's try and keep everybody together. Stay together, everyone. And this is a two terabyte super fast external SSD from SanDisk. And I, I'm only interested in the sequential read and write speed. So let's see what this will do. If it hits a thousand, a little over a thousand, that's typically what it does. I want to see 2000. I got a feeling I'm not going to see it. Yeah, my feeling is right. So just to double check my work, I don't need to continue that test. I'm going to plug in a different adapt uh, cable rather and try a different USB port. Let's go around back. Since it says they're times four, that means they're all the same. So they should all perform the same, whether front or back. And we'll run this test again. Yeah, it's the same. All right, that's what I was predicting. And by the way, that's nothing to shake a stick at. It's just, I've only seen two computers so far that have been able to drive this SanDisk at its full 2000 capability, and I can't tell you which models. I, I should have made a note. <laughs> I can't remember. I have to go back and watch my own videos to find them. But I'm sure our write speed will also be right around 1,000. So the, the, the drive itself is being held back by the computer. And as I've experienced, that's the case most of the time with this specific drive. Davis Parsons has now been a member for 14 months. He says, I made it to 14 months now. Hello, everyone in the chat. Hey, Davis, thank you. Thank you. Also, another person that's obviously been there since we turned membership option on. Anna Linda says, I saved about $7.77 on his Beijing purchase that he used my link for. So I'm going to give you the $7.77. Here's my savings to you, Carrie. Well, thank you, Alan. That's very thoughtful and kind of you. Doesn't sound like you saved any money. You broke even. <laughs> I'll be interested in your thoughts about the uh, uh, Feng Jing drive and your experience with it. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. I don't need to run any more tests like this. Uh, I need to use the right mouse, though. Let me come over here, close this out. So eject drive. And we're going to power this down, and we'll open it up and see, see what it looks like inside. So let's shut down. So now I'm going to go full screen over here on... Let me see how long this takes to shut down. Oh, couldn't even finish the sentence. Okay, so with this powered down, I'm going to unplug power. In fact, let's just take all the plugs. I love it when they fall on the floor. And let me just clear some room on the bench so we have some space to work. I'm so glad I bought this. I never use it for actual personal use. Strictly use it for testing here on the channel. Same with the eight terabyte. That NVMe drive I purchased, that's eight terabyte. I don't use that for personal use. It's just to test capacity limitations that manufacturers report and to verify if what they're reporting is accurate. And speaking of which, that's what I want to do right now. So we'll take the two screws out that are here on the bottom. And let's see. Got my screwdriver and I got my glasses so I can see. It's one screw removed. And uh, there's the second one. And then it would have to slide towards, the, yeah, just like so. Open that up. Oh. Okay. So let me show you what's in here. Go over 
here, here. Okay, I'm going to walk this over to the camera so we can look at this together. What we've got right here is a two and a half inch cable or a cable for a two and a half inch drive, whether that's mechanical or solid state. Somehow that's that glued down. Interesting. And then I don't know what these little posts are for, but maybe that's how you mount the drive with those metal brackets, I guess. Here is our 4C NVMe drive. You'll see there's no room for any more NVMe. There's just the one, and the minis for them had two. Our RAM module is a single chip, so they don't have this in dual channel. Made by the same company, 4C. And I'm going to guess our Wi-Fi chip is likely underneath the M.2. They usually are. Let's take a look. We can dive down a little deeper. Let's remove the NVMe drive. No. Wah, wah. So this is a, almost like the little cover they put on an engine when you open the hood of a car. They have this cover covering up the motherboard with just access to the NVMe slot, or M.2 slot, and our DIMM sockets, and then the area for adding the drive. So yeah, I guess those, whoever said, or whoever suggested the, those metal bands that were in the bag, that, that look like they're about that length. I don't understand why they have wheels on the end, but you know, that's all right. I'm all for somebody doing something different. So that means the Wi-Fi adapter is hidden somewhere. Is it soldered in or is it socketed? Well, there's only one way to know, and that's going to be to remove this plastic cover, which kind of defeats the purpose for why they have it. But to do that, I see three screws across the top, and I see three screws across the bottom, and then I imagine this should just pop right off. But I've got to be careful with the... <laughs> Before I pull this off, I'll show you. It's like got sticky tape on it. Come on. Wow, some real sticky tape. Because that would keep us from lifting that plastic up if it's taped down. Glad I thought of that now. All right, take a look-see. See what's going on in here. And this screwdriver is too wide to fit down into the holes. Do I have a smaller one? Maybe. Didn't the description say dual channel? Well, it's clearly dual channel capable. I don't know if they specified that they were sending it to you in dual channel mode. I think that was open to interpretation. Hence the necessity for reviews like this. And instead of running benchmarks on it all day, let's actually open it, look at it, and actually use it in real life. And then we can determine its value, not based on what some software says. Don't you agree? Okay, there's the sixth screw. And then this should just lift off, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Take that flash drive or the keyboard dongle out of there. Hmm. Something's holding us in. Yeah, that wasn't bad. 
Okay. Well, this wasn't very useful. Um, it does appear we've got about an extra inch and a half of space, maybe two inches in the case is taller than it really needed to be in order to accommodate spacing for the cabling for a two and a half inch drive. So you can see how much bigger the case has to be to accommodate that. And there is our Wi-Fi card right there. Now, why that wasn't user accessible through the cover, I don't know why. And again, you can see the make and model of the Wi-Fi card. Now, what I can do next is take said Wi-Fi card out. So I don't want to, I want to pull the antennas off. Here we go. Check out that little screw that holds the Wi-Fi card in. Then we'll take the Wi-Fi card out. <laughs> if I can find a place to grab it. Oh, and it's taped down onto the board. Okay. And then it looks like we've got a screw here. And another screw up here. And I don't see anything else holding this board in other than those two screws right up at the, so that's at the bottom of the case. I was thinking this is the top, but this is the bottom because the power button's up closer to me. Cool. Okay. So essentially, this is everything right here. So that's your CPU heatsink fan. Is our CMOS battery. The other side, the user serviceable side there. And then, of course, our I.O. on the front and our I.O. on the back. Okay. And, of course, if we weren't going to use a two and a half inch drive and we wanted to get this thing out of here, it just unclips. I don't see any harm in letting it stay. So, to put this all back, let's see. I don't know where this was. Hmm. It's got double-sided sticky tape on it. Where did it go? Probably somewhere like. Hmm. Who knows the condition of the battery? It's a CR2032 battery. They're usually good for five or six years. I mean, I've seen them good up to 10 years, quite honestly. And it's not a big deal. It's just keeping the date and time for us. Keep wanting to put it in this way. Let's 
I think they just stuck this to the case. See if that's going to work. Goes in real easy. I mean, I've struggled with some of these to get them in and out. Of course, I don't have it all the way in either. I don't want the battery there. So that CPU heatsink is hitting the battery there. But I'm pretty sure battery was taped to the inside of the case and not to the motherboard. Let's try it to the other side and see if that fits any better. Oh, much better. Much, much better. Okay. So that means this screw can go back over here. This one over here. Okay, do you have any, any questions about this computer? Putting the Wi-Fi card back in right now. And that tape holds that wire down, and this piece of tape over here needs to hold this other wire down, and I can't grab it. Here we go. Just keeps those wires from getting pinched on anything. good. Can't use that driver. These holes are too narrow. Paul Howe says the bars, those little metal springy things I was puzzled about, said they're like leaf springs that fit over the pegs and are screwed to the two and a half inch drive. Oh, well, that's a very unique installation method. I've never seen a method like that before. And I might never even use one because I've stopped using two and a half inch drives a long time ago. But to each their own, if that's something you want to do, if you purchase one of these, do you know that is an option. And that's what those little springy things are for, those long metal bars that I took out earlier and said, does anybody know what this is for? You don't want to over-tighten these screws. They're very easily over-tightened and can crack the plastic or strip out the um, 
the mount that they're screwing into is like self-tapping screws. Why they did that instead of using machine screws, but... Um, oh, let's, uh, let's clone the drive to a Gen 4 drive and see if this is a Gen 4 motherboard with a Gen 3 drive, or is it a Gen 3 motherboard with a Gen 3 drive? I know one way to find out. Just tape this back down where it was. And I'll leave the cover off because we're going to be eating to get in there. And uh, yeah, we'll just run a clone on this. So let me find a Gen 4 drive I can steal. What is going to be my volunteer? Who is going to be my volunteer? Looking for Gen 4. That is not Gen 4. Hey, you know what? Go big or go home, right? Amazon had a sale on these uh, Western Digital Black NVMe drives that have a heat sink built onto it. Where do you get a load of this? Now, these are just one terabyte. And I thought these might be good for mini PCs where the drive could run hot because it's got a built-in heat sink. Most desktops already have, uh, the motherboards will have heat sinks designed to match with the rest of the board. And if given a choice between using the motherboard's heat sink or the manufacturer of the NVMe, I would choose the motherboard heat sink because they're usually, if not as good as, even better than the ones that the manufacturers include on theirs. And more importantly, it matches the aesthetic of the board where this could break up the aesthetic. But I think on these mini PCs, having a heat sink on a high performance NVMe drive is a good idea if you have enough room inside of the mini PC. And I think we're going to be okay. I could be wrong, but that's okay. For our testing anyway, this will at least answer the Gen 3, Gen 4 question. So let me just set that aside and um, plug the keyboard and mouse back in. Power. I don't need to plug the internet into it. We're just going to boot up an Acronis rescue disk. Plug that there. Acronis Rescue. What's great on these one terabyte SanDisk flash drives we were talking about earlier is I partition this. So I got a little tiny partition for the, San, the, um, for the Acronis Rescue disk. And then the rest of the storage space is a second partition to hold the drive images that I'm backing up. So I have many drive images on this one flash drive. It's pretty useful. Keeps everything in one place. All right, now I gotta figure out how to boot to the flash drive with this unit. This might take me a minute. So let's go back over to camera one here. Self corner. And turn on HDMI input. This button here. And I'm going to just, what, delete maybe? The delete key get us in. Something's going to get us in the BIOS. Did I break it? Quiet. Oh, I hear it now. I plugged the network, but I didn't plug the HDMI cable in. I did the exact opposite thing I said I was going to do. 
Silly me, I don't need the network plugged in. I need the HDMI cable plugged in, or we're not going to get a picture. Not exactly rocket science. what it's doing. So I'm going to unplug it. Get a few seconds. Plug it back in. Hit the power button again. And then it should sense there's an HDMI cable plugged into it and activate that port. Some systems do that only on boot up. Okay, I got lucky and we got in here. So let's take a look at what our boot options are. Full screen. B. Escape. I don't like that. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff in here, but it doesn't look like there's much we're going to be able to change. wonder what this does. I don't want to overclock it. It's already running hot enough. BMD is usually used in um, raid configurations, isn't it? But we don't have enough here to do a raid. That's weird that that's an option in the menu. Okay, here's what I want. Boot option. How about boot override? Boot override. Here we go. UEFI sand disk. That's what I want. So that now should boot into our Acronis Rescue Disk flash drive that I've plugged in. And I'm going to need a little enclosure, USB enclosure, for the Western Digital Drive to clone to. Where did I put my enclosure? Did I leave it over here? Hmm. I swear, I have lost or misplaced this particular enclosure <laughs> more than any other. All right, we'll just use this one. This one will work. I'm sure after the broadcast, it'll be right in front of me the whole time. All right, so. Got a Cronus loading there. Say it froze up. Uh, mouse is moving. I don't think it's frozen. I just need it to time out. Just give it a minute. Samuel Kowalski joins us and says, hello, welcome in, Samuel. So the fan just quieted down on the unit. Long Dog said, Kerry, it's 118.9 in the shade. Care to join me in my desert empire? Yeah, well, I can join you from a distance. It's not quite that hot here, but uh, we're supposed to be getting close to that this, uh, this next week. Craig Casabona with a $20 super chat. Thank you, Craig.
not letting me select these other windows. And I'm not quite sure how much time I need to give it to get past whatever it's doing here. So I guess we'll try this one more time just to see if we have better luck. So I'll hold the power button in until it shuts off. Press and release the power button and start hitting delete and F2 alternately. Right now the system's just uh, sitting here doing nothing. Taking a very long time to get a post screen. That's concerning. I'm going to unplug power. And let's turn on camera one so you guys can see me again. And I just want to make sure I haven't unseated like the RAM or something or something's not quite seated all the way in. There's really not much to break on this, so let's give it another try. And I'd have to take the motherboard back out and see if I'm pinching a cable or something. It's very strange because normally with a computer, oh, here we go. It either works or it doesn't work. You know what I mean? You don't usually get this sort of sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But those intermittent problems are always the most frustrating ones to solve. But uh, this hasn't had a problem until I put it back together. So it's probably on me if I created a problem. Let's go back over to one more time, try and boot off of this flash drive and see if we have any better luck. And let's see here. That's doing that. I'll check my phone. Hmm. Normally, I've seen a Coronas do this before, where you have you have to time out. It's, it's like looking for something. Um, I don't think it's freezing. Nick Caffrey sent $10.68. He says, I love the wide-ranging content on your channel and the conversational style. Thank you. Alan Linda says, after finding out the build you did for me is using a Gigabyte B560HD3 with an i5-11600K, and it does support Gen 4, I will clone the current boot disk to this one, that's Gen 3. I suspect I will not notice any sp significant speed difference, but going to the Gen 4 at this price is not a bad thing, and I'll give you feedback after swapping it and using it. Yeah, sounds like a plan, Alan. Be interested to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, John, I see your email. We're not sending computers out and I and I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Um, I cannot send computers out to your friends or your family or people you know. This is for our community only. I send it to you. That's how it goes in the records so I know who I've sent things to and who I have it. I can't have any record of somebody that's not a member of the community and associate it to you. Your friend is welcome to come in here and nominate themselves for a giveaway. And of course, you're welcome to nominate yourself for the giveaway. And then when you receive it, you can then do whatever you want. If you want to ship it to somebody, that's, that's on you. But uh, I've asked and I will continue to ask that we not give 
take computers away from members of the community who are eligible and give them to non-members of the community. I just don't think it's fair. We have a lot of members of the community here who have never received anything. And again, what you do with it when you have it is your business, but, but please don't volunteer me to, to, to help out your friends. And I mean, I've got enough work and I do appreciate you, but that's on you. I, you know, if I ship it to you, it's on you to get it to your friend. Or your friend can come in to the channel and become a part of the community and and you know be selected like anybody else. Trevor says it looks like a Cronus is looking for a network. You know what? It it could be. It could be. I could plug the network in just to see what it does. It may be trying to uh I don't know. Get an IP address or something, and now we're waiting for it to time out. I don't think so, though. I'm pretty sure I've booted to a Cronus Rescue Disk multiple times before without an issue. So there's other ways to do this. I have an Acronis Rescue Disk uh, that's a Linux base. So we can do that. Just take this one out and we'll plug in the Linux boot. Option of the Cronus. Let's turn this on. And again, I have to go say it's delete to get in the BIOS. I'll just hit delete. Yes, it is delete. Save and exit and go over to there. Let's boot this one and see if we have better luck. Lawton Dog says it's 119 degrees outside, but in my house it's 73 thanks to a 410 AC unit. 0.5 over the needs. Oh, well, that didn't even boot at all. Let's try one more time. I can't read that. What's that say? Oh, okay, it's loading. It's bad enough it puts text on the screen, but for some reason it was all shaded out. So it was small and faded. All right, now that that's run, let's grab... Closure, and we'll plug that in right here. Then we'll go to Tools. We'll go to Clone. Next. Source is disk three. That's our NVMe interface. Destination is the one terabyte drive connected to USB. That's our non-formatted, not initialized, brand new Western Digital Black with the heatsink. We're using it to replace a disk on this machine and proceed. All right, we're off to the races. Should take about eight minutes. That sounds about right. So while we're waiting, if you have questions for me, I'll do my best to provide answers. And always be sure and check the chat room for answers as well, because um, there's a lot of people, very, very smart people in our community that may have an equal but different answer that is in many cases, better than the answer I suggest. So it's up to you to decide, but do give them consideration uh, or you're only doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Michael Dane said it's 96 degrees here in Hocking Hills, Ohio. Humidity is 85%. It is sticky and hot. Oops. J 
Chat room's pretty quiet. Did I put everybody to sleep? I guess I'll get a colder Gatorade. These are getting warm really quick now. I'm going to step away here for just a minute. Be right back. All right, sorry about that. Doesn't look like I've missed much. Well, it may have been a bit optimistic on that time remaining. But as a new install, it shouldn't take very long. We're not copying that much data. Oystein says, so this is how the Linux version of the Acronis Rescue Disk looks. Yep, yeah, it's always looked the same. <laughs> you can't tell one version from the other. They always look like this. Um, and there's some machines where, you know, they won't boot, as we've just experienced uh, with the Windows PE or... You know, I see people, sometimes they have these Dell computers and they have trouble cloning their system because they don't realize Dell ships the, especially the business class machines with the drive controller in RAID mode, even though it's only one drive and it's not using RAID. That's Dell's preferred method. And because it does that, you, the Cronus cannot see the RAID controller. You've got to go into the BIOS and change it to AHCI and then a Cronus will see it, but then the system won't boot anymore and cloning the image won't work. So this has created a lot of confusion, confusion for people. So there's a way to create your own custom Acronis boot disk that loads that driver. You'd have to download it from Dell. And when you're creating your Acronis rescue disk with your Acronis software, you have the option to add controller drivers. And so you could just add that driver into your boot disk and then it'll see that RAID controller and then cloning it's super easy. Samuel Kowalski says, Carrie, thanks for letting us know about all those deals in your Prime Day live stream the other day. I ended up buying an Amazon Fire Stick 4K Max for 50% off. Yeah, the 4K Max was like 25 bucks. What a steal. David Dix at Rock City PC said, yeah, no Dell is notorious for setting the controller in RAID mode. They did that when Optane was big too. He said, I've got like 10 or 20 16 gig <laughs> Optane M.2 drives that I use for super fast Windows installers. That's cool. Doman 2000 said you can also clone or image directly from Windows itself. Hot imaging VSS, if the image tool supports it, it works pretty convenient. Londog said, Kerry, that was a fantastic tip you passed on about Dell business computers. Boy, Londog just wants to keep putting that T in my last name. <laughs> Kerry Holtman. <laughs> he says, the first time I ran into that issue, it was puzzling until I figured it out. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, you know, when I, when I look at these little mini PCs from Dell and Lenovo and HP, I've got to tell you, the Dells, they stink. No USB-C, still running Generation 3 NVMe on a 13500 processor. Inexcusable. The HP minis, on the other hand, and, you know, some of them have two M.2 slots, both Gen 4, and in many cases, they cost less. I don't know why Dell is making these decisions or who's making those decisions, but to get a brand new or, you know, fairly recent Dell Mini that has no USB Type-C, it's got a spot for a second M.2, but they haven't soldered a connector onto it. I guess you got to pay extra for that. And the one you do get only runs at Gen 3 speeds. And Dell wants to tell you that, that you know, this, uh, this NVMe drive is a Type 35. What's a Type 35? Well, that's some nomenclature Dell made up, and nobody in the industry uses it. I can't believe how long this is taking. Very slow. But faster for me to just reinstall Windows. Gilman 2000 says, maybe pure business corp targeted. All the minis from HP, Lenovo, and Dell are targeted to businesses. They are not targeted for home users. So the idea of giving you a 13th generation Intel chip without Type-C USB and without Gen 4 NVMe is something only Dell is doing. Neither Lenovo nor HP will do that. If you buy a similarly equipped model from them, you will get a Type-C and you will get Gen 4 NVMe. It's only Dell that's decided that we're going to stick with Gen 3. Do yourself a favor. Go online and try and figure out if the Dell Mini PC supports Gen 3 or Gen 4. Let me know if you find any piece of work, paperwork from Dell that identifies. It'll say it's M.2. It'll say it's NVMe. It'll say it's uh, Type 35 or Type 40, which, again, that's something they made up. But the actual information you want to know, is this Gen 3 or Gen 4? They don't tell you. Nowhere. I looked and looked, and I cannot find... Outside of discussion groups where people are talking about it, I can't find anything officially from Dell and the product specifications or documentation of what generation NVMe is on any of their mini computers. If you need to hear something I've said, you don't need to ask me to repeat myself. You have a scroll bar underneath your video and you just rewind this live video on demand and you can replay it as many times as you need to hear it. <laughs> Oystein says it's always eight minutes. <laughs> it really shouldn't be taking that long unless, you know, this USB port is really slowed down for some reason. All right. Um, It'll probably be one of those things where it like jumps 90% in a blink of an eye here. So I'm a little concerned it shouldn't really be taking this long. The um, target drive is blinking, so it appears to be working. Mouse moves, we're not locked up. I wouldn't expect the target drive activity LED to be blinking if we were locked up. So it's doing it. And I can hear the fan on the CPU kind of cranking up a bit and slowing down. So it's doing some work. I wonder if plugging the keyboard and mouse dongle into that USB chain there is slowed it down. So I'll just take it out temporarily and see if that speeds things up. I should have a discount soon for you guys from Malware Bytes, but it's just going to be a commission link. They're not really working with us. Um, but that's something. So, you know, we got to start somewhere. So hopefully I'll have some information on that soon.
Now, normally, when I'm working and I'm doing something like this, I would have another system at another bench. I wouldn't just be staring at this, waiting for it to finish. We're kind of in a unique situation here doing a live video. And especially with familiar, um, hardware I'm not familiar with, things like this can happen. And in a normal day of work, even if this was happening and it was going to take an hour, I wouldn't care because I'd be doing something else. So I would just check on it from time to time. So we're in a very different and unique scenario when we're broadcasting live and we're kind of waiting on this to finish before we can move forward. And there's always that idea in my mind that maybe I should just uh, shut it down and do a clean install. So I think maybe, maybe that's what I'm going to do because this doesn't really look like we're making much progress. And th this copy should have been over... 10 minutes ago. Like, I don't know how long it's been running, but it's way too long. So I think I'm going to go ahead and shut it. Oh, wait a minute. Now the mouse is... Oh, now wait a minute. <laughs> the... <laughs> the mouse is, is not moving because I unplugged the dongle. And our time just moved to six minutes. Now the mouse should move, right? Okay. <laughs> I just freaked myself out. Um... Gosh, we're so close. You know, we finally made progress, but just to go from the eight minute to the seven minute to the six minute, it's like taking 10 minutes to do each minute. I understand their estimates can be a little off, but that's not even close. Oh, it might be running at USB 2 speeds. You could be very correct at that. It may not have loaded the USB 3 drivers. That's possible. So yeah, I think what I want to do, oh, let's just cancel this. It's taken too long. And close this. And I'm going to pull the power plug here. Take that out. And I'll take this one out. And we'll go full screen back on camera one. At least I'd be doing something rather than just staring at the screen, you know? So this gives me something to do. Go ahead and take out their NVMe drive. Set that aside. And we'll just pop this bad boy in here. Oh, it won't even fit in there. Kind of glad I took that out. Um, this plastic housing has these um, little walls that go on each side of the NVMe drive here. And the heat sink seems to be interfering it's like just a little too wide for some reason. I guess because of where it connects to the drive, it's a little wider than the drive and they don't give you any extra space here. So if I pull the plastic piece off, I could access it, but I think what I'd rather do, see, I'm glad we didn't wait, is I'll just grab a different drive. I'll grab one without a heat sink on it. Good to know. This is how we learn. What can I grab? What can I use? Um, hmm. Grab a Fangjing S880, you say? Okay. I think I will. Yong Tae Jong says hello from South Korea. Hey, welcome in. We don't get many viewers from South Korea in here.
All right, so this is our two terabyte Gen 4 Benjing drive. And my Windows 11 USB is right here, in there. Turn this on and switch over to my HDMI input. Guess I have to give it power, don't I? Power. Now turn it on. That would probably be helpful. There we go. And it's perfectly silent right now. I don't even hear the fan running at all. And now it should be loading the Windows 11 from the USB. I need to go full screen so I can see it though. Okay. Yep. Install. Oh, I don't want it plugged into the network. Don't have product key. There's 11 Pro. Next. Accept the license agreement. Next. Custom. Next. And we're off to the races. All right, so that's running very quickly. That's what we want to see. Much, much better. And then I guess I set my Gatorade somewhere, set it down, and I, I don't know where I put it. Time for a new one anyway, right? All right. I agree. I think I need to put these things in the freezer. Refreshing. All right, I'm going to step off camera for just a second. Bear with me here. I see an Amazon gift card from Oystein for $50. Thank you, Oystein. And one from Tom Jackson with $77.77. Holy cow. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, Oystein. You guys rock. Okay. Bob Barr said it's 113 degrees where you are. Oh, it's going to get hotter than that. We're going to hit 117, 118 here in the next couple days. It's hot. Like I said, it was 102 last night at 1 o'clock in the morning. My phone says it's um, 111. As you can imagine, sort of these stumbling blocks that I run into, like the rescue disc doesn't load or the you find out that the heat sink gets in the way. This is what happens when I'm refurbishing the older units and why it takes so long to set them up. Um, something that you think, oh, you're just going to put windows on it. It should take 30 minutes. No, no, it usually takes, on average, with all the unexpected things that occur, I can't find a driver, there's a new BIOS, but now the BIOS doesn't apply correctly. Or, you know, the controller's in RAID mode, I want to put it to HCI. So that's a real tricky thing. It's almost easier to just reinstall the operating system under AHCI mode. And it's just, 
you know, I think you get a little better performance out of the raid mode on those Dells, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. Because that means anytime you have to work on your operating system, you need to be able to load the driver. All right, Shift F10. Just making sure my audio is going out. Yeah, okay, good. And of course, we should all know this by heart. O-O-B-E, out-of-box experience. Back, you got to click on the box. There we go. O-O-B-E. Oh, I guess I was right. O-O-B-E, backslash, bypass, N-R-O. And uh, we'll go through that sequence one more time. I should modify my Windows 11 installer to have that registry tweak already in there, but I just, I've been so busy. I don't have time, so I just do this. It ultimately takes me less time. I just do this than to mess around with setting up a custom installer and then having to test it. But one of these days. I mean, besides 23H2 will be out in a couple months anyway, so I'm just going to have to do it again and again. Nick Caffrey says 55 degrees Fahrenheit carry in Western Ireland. Yeah, that sounds way better. <laughs> I'll take 55 any day. All right, let's do this one more time. We'll yes to that. Yes to that. Skip that. I don't have internet. It's now an option. Continue with limited setup. Username of user. Enter. Enter. I guess this stuff doesn't really matter. I don't intend on keeping this drive in here, but for the sake of being consistent, we'll just uncheck things that I normally do and keep doing it all the same regardless. Nick Boverman said you can set that up in Rufus to bypass that. I tried it and it was, um, it didn't work correctly for me. So now, I don't know if since, you know, Microsoft has updated their image and Rufus has probably updated the software, but it, it did not work. I tried it like three or four times thinking I might have done something wrong. And yeah, I made a video explaining to people that they could do that. So it's funny when people tell me what I've already explained to them. <laughs> people send me links to articles that I linked in my Twitter page days before. I'm like... You guys are just repeating what I've already said. So hopefully, we got a desktop here in a second. And I shouldn't need to install any drivers for this. I mean, if it's Gen 4, we should see it right out of the box. So let me pull our Windows 11 install media and put the utilities flash drive in there. Copy over Crystal Dismark without doing anything else just to see where we're at. See testing. Crystal Dismark. That's what we want right there. Eject flash drive. Done with that. And crystal disk mark. Now, if we get a number over, you know, 4,000 megabytes per second on our sequential read, then we're definitely uh, a Gen 4 motherboard. And we have a Gen 3 NVMe that was shipped with it. On the other hand, if we're still only getting about 3,400, then we have a Gen 3 motherboard. And there's our answer. We have a Gen 3 motherboard. So that's good to know that they didn't cripple the machine by putting in a cheaper NVMe drive, putting in a Gen 3 in a Gen 4 machine. So it's obviously a, uh, a Gen 3 M.2. All right, we can stop that test. 
And, you know, if we wanted to put drivers on this, like if I right click and the start button here and go to the device manager, we'll see items that, all these items, for example, that need drivers. And one sort of secret way around that is, you know, I have the original drive right here. And if I put the original drive in this enclosure, with a little rubber tab on this one, it's a little bit tough to move. There it goes. Yeah, so if I take our original drive, and this is just a tip for you guys who do your own stuff. Let's see, did that load? Hmm. Long delay there. Let me uh, click OK on that. We'll plug this in one more time. I'm not sure what that was all about. Hmm. It's bizarre. Either it's taking a really long time to handshake with the USB drive, with the enclosure, or maybe it needs a driver, but it could just work regardless. Okay, now it's blinking. That's better. So now that we've got that loaded up, what we can do is we can just point at any of these devices and click driver. Well, actually, you don't even have to do that. We could just click update driver, browse my computer, and then just select the D drive and specifically we can choose the uh, Windows folder, click OK, click Next, and it should find the drivers inside of the Windows subdirectory. Quite often they're in System32, and if we're more specific with the folder, it won't take so long because it's searching through all of the subfolders. So just to give you an example, you see how long that's taking. If I click Update Driver, click Browse, once again, we will go back to Windows, but this time I'll pick System32. And then you'll see there is a folder called Drivers right there. Click OK. I think that'll search faster. Now I got the wrong folder. One more time. Browse. Let's just do the entire System32. There we go, we found it. And it'll remember that location. So the next time we want to update, like this is an unknown device, we go to driver, update driver, browse my computer. So it saves that location. So all you have to do is hit next. We can just go through it like that and go through each one. Just as an alternative way, just pull the drivers right out of your old Windows install. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. See that? It'll find them all, I promise you. <laughs> oh, let's see. Is Amazon dropping something off? It looks like they are.
Another good reason to make a full image backup, because that way you will have your drivers whether you realize it or not. What, I, what draws me to computer repair is there's multiple ways to accomplish the same task, and it's debatable over which way is better, right? It's whatever way you prefer. Some ways might be faster, but on the other hand, some people are faster, right? So there's the process speed, and then there's the processor, the person speed, both of which play a, a role in how long something takes to get done and, of course, how they choose to do it. So you know, at the end of the day, in the IT that I've worked in, all that mattered was that you got your job done. It didn't necessarily matter how you did it, as long as it was done within the time, within an acceptable time frame. Do we have any new hot sauces to convey? Uh, yeah, you're not going to really hear me talking about that in the summertime. <laughs> it's the last thing I want to do. Uh, let's see. So many devices that need drivers on this little guy, huh? Kind of surprising. Now, many of these may come through automatically with Windows Update. Remember, we haven't plugged this into the network since we've installed Windows on it. So this is probably doing it the hard way. But it's just there for an opportunity to show you something that I don't think I've shown you before. So why not? So my question is, is the Minisform TH version of this Gen 4? I thought I said it was Gen 4. Am I bringing that wrong? That one. How many do I have left now? Getting there. Almost done. That should be the last one, right? Everything else should be happy. Well, that's all of our drivers. That's everything. Wi-Fi, network, Bluetooth, controllers everything so in order to make sure that those drivers are going to take effect we need to reboot so i'll disconnect safely this nvme enclosure and i'm going to reboot the computer and while it's rebooting i'm going to go check my front door because it looks like amazon dropped off a package and i don't want it to sit out in that 110 plus degree weather whatever it is
All right, that wasn't too bad. There were a couple of boxes out there. Wonder what this is. I ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon Prime Day, and so I'm expecting a lot. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, okay, I know what this is. That is for a different computer project that I'm working on. There are these other boxes. Just can't identify what they are from the outside. Okay, sorry about that. I just figured I'd take advantage of the reboot time, which I'm sure is probably all done by now, right? Okay. I just wanted to open those boxes up and let the uh, heat escape them. Yeah, they're little ovens, <laughs> little cardboard ovens. All right. Now, um, just to be thorough, Crystal Disc Mark. Just want to make sure that, I mean, Gen 4 shouldn't require any of those drivers. So we just want to verify we're still going to be under 3,600 or below on our read speed here. And that just absolutely makes me certain we're Gen 3. I mean, I'm pretty certain right now, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't think the drivers were going to make any difference, and they didn't. And then again, if we look at the device manager, everything in there now since we've done that should be happy, and it is. So that's just a little tip there from your Uncle Kerry, turning some lemons of a situation here into some lemonade of information. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again very, very soon. And until next time, bye for now.